I've been thinking about our reliance on words. Our words are absolutely important. When we pray, we most commonly use words. We read the Bible, which is it's got lots of words in it. Our liturgy, boy, that has a lot of words. So words are pretty fundamental. And words articulation is important. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And uh, the thing is, words are not the whole story. After all, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word got lived out culturally. The world became relatable and was lived, not just read. And that's a sort of a bit of a challenge that I been setting myself to try to pray without words. The Christian concept of meditation is a very long and well-established one. Sometimes it does involve meditation on specific words or phrases, but actually just sitting and being, maybe beginning some meditation with scripture and then letting your mind just be isn't a bad thing. I quite often find myself at the seaside and uh, staring out to sea and thinking, be still and know that I am God. And then doing my best just to be, to stare out to sea, to watch the waves roll in, to become aware of all the sounds, smells, sensations, of the wind across my skin, of the smells of the seaside, of the perspective of people having conversations coming closer or walking away, of a dog barking in the distance, of seagulls making noises overhead. And just in that awareness, just being aware of God's presence, fighting the temptation to put that into words, there is something in that. There is something in that. I'm not saying it's the only way to pray. I'm not saying it's the uh, only show in town. But sometimes it's good to unplug ourselves from the constant pressure of words, in a way. The constant pressure to be able to articulate, to be able to explain, to be able to argue, to be able to express in words. At the end of the day, there's something divine in that because God is inexpressible. Part of the uh, recent discussion, particularly in the media, about the gender of God in liturgy. I mean, that's all a bit of a nonsense in that there's a Christian tradition of knowing that God is not a bloke with a white beard on a cloud, that God isn't a man, that God isn't, if you like, a boy's name for the divine. But we do tend to think of that culturally. And actually, just being still and knowing God as God, just that God is, without the words. That helps remind us that any attempt to define God in words falls short. It doesn't mean we shouldn't try. But it's about humility, about as soon as we think we've explained God, we're heretics, because we can't explain God. God is God is beyond, and God graciously makes God's self known to us. So be still, and know that God is.